Without further ado, it is my pleasure to welcome our speaker, Jamie. She's a graphic designer and photographer living in St. Louis Park. In 2016, she founded All Are Welcome Here, a woman-owned Minnesota-based business based on a simple idea, respect and compassion for all. All Are Welcome Here makes beautiful products that promote a more welcoming world and give 10 to 20% of sales back to organizations that do the same. $70,000 and counting. All Are Welcome Here loves working with schools, businesses, nonprofits, religious organizations, and communities on customized campaigns and events. Welcome, Jamie. Glad to have you here. And you have permission to share your screen. Should you like to do that? Oh, you're on mute. Okay, then I'm muted. God. Oh. Hey, everyone. <laughs> Hey, thanks for being here on this uh, super cool day. Um, I am really excited for this opportunity to share more about um, this project with all of you. Um, just a little bit more of a bit of a background on me. Um, my name is Jamie Chismore. I live in St. Louis Park, um, but I also um, volunteer with um, the Golden Valley Pride Festival. Um, I also uh, volunteered with the artist showcase put on by the Golden Valley Foundation and uh, Friends of St. Louis Park. And I also serve on the St. Louis Park Human Rights Commission. So um, I also, uh, my background is in journalism. Um, I went to school thinking I was going to be a doctor and then fell in love with photography and design and storytelling. And one of the things I love doing most is telling stories about our community. I've, I feel very blessed that through this uh, through journalism, I've gotten to meet people from all over our community who really make our community shine and make our community great just by being part of it. And that I think that's part of the impetus behind All Are Welcome Here uh, as well. So um, All Are Welcome Here started in um, 2016, um, right here in this very basement. Um, it was right after the 2016 election. Um, I was... Um, crying in my basement, in all honesty. <laughs> I was very upset about a lot of the hateful rhetoric that was going on and um, really trying to find a way forward, trying to find a way positive forward. I think there was just a lot of negativity and, you know, how do we build community after, um, you know, after, after we've been told that certain people's humanity is not valued anymore. So, um, I was greatly inspired by, um, I don't know if you remember this incident or not, but it was at uh, Maple Grove High School. Um, there was an incident like right after the election of really, really racist graffiti found in a bathroom. And what I loved about the story was, wasn't the racist graffiti, but it was like how these students, a lot of them who couldn't vote, all got together the next day and made signs and plastered the entire entryway of the high school with signs. And as a mom, you know, I'm always looking for ways to model, you know, better behavior. And here were these kids who basically were showing us adults like how to value each other and how to honor each other's humanity. So from those signs <laughs> came this sign. And now I'm gonna try to share my screen. So here we go. Boop, boop. This is good practice because tomorrow I'm talking to my journalism school, my, my alma mater. So here we go. Screen share. Do you see it? Is it pretty? Yay! <laughs> I got some hand claps. So um, I'm going to make this larger. Here we go. So, um, so I decided to um, make a lawn sign and I put the idea out on social media um, and I was like, hey, I'm going to make this sign. What, what do people think? And I threw it out there. I asked for feedback. People came back and all of a sudden, it went viral. And so I thought I could maybe get like 50 people to go in on this lawn sign with me. And it's now been multiple zeros behind that number. And it's been incredible. Um, I, when I first put it out um, on the website, it, it was like a pre-order sale. And my phone was like, ping, 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 ping. It, it was almost like everyone needed a sign of hope and here there was one. And it was so cool. Um, one of the best things about All Are Welcome Here is really, really, really being out in our community and, and really, um, you know, 
just getting to know people and hearing their stories and, you know, see what they like about being here, see how you can support um, the efforts that they're doing. So um, our original recipient was the ACLU and we still give a lot to the ACLU. They've actually been the biggest, we donated the majority of our money to them, but um, cause they fight for the rights of all. And sometimes they do take on unpopular cases, you know, but it, there's, they've been doing it for a hundred years and a lot of times change can only be affected through um, striking down laws or reinforcing laws that might, um, <clears throat> it's very expensive. It's <laughs> anything with a lawyer, again, you add more zeros behind. <laughs> so, um, so I put this sign out on social media, it went viral. We had people meet us at a market and it was so amazing. I'm just, to have people like hold the sign in their hand. Like people were literally holding a shared value. And to see that connection was like a huge relief for a lot of us to see that, you know, after all of this hateful rhetoric, there is still a shared value in our community, which is all our welcome here. And my job, honestly, as a designer is just to be the docent of the sign and make sure it goes on to live a, 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 you know, goes on to do as much good in our community as humanly possible. So in this first slide, you can kind of see some of our translations, you know, Spanish and Arabic were some of our very first translations. Um, we've done some work around voting, which has been great. And um, our motto, respect and compassion for all, makes a really nice t-shirt, I have to say. I enjoy, um, it also comes in a sweatshirt too, you know, always have to upsell. So, um, we are dedicated to building a world where everyone, regardless of race, religion, sexual orientation, gender identity, or, dis or, or disability are included and valued. Um, the sign has taken on such an amazing life all on its own. Um, they, if you can see, um, there's a, a project in St. Paul, I'm blanking on the name, where they basically do custom pianos and they put pianos all over the city. And this group of students wanted to make an all are welcome here piano and it was outside the red balloon bookstore for a whole summer. It was amazing. Um, our signs are often brought to protests. Um, they were all over the women's march um, in 2017 um, when uh, George Floyd um, was killed over the summer. We, um, we could not keep lawn signs in stock after all of the unrest. Um, people really there's something very, very satisfying about putting a shared value in the ground and in your hands. Um, there's a picture in the top left corner, which I love, is a thing that we do in communities um, where we have postcard events. And we've done a couple of these where um, we invite people to write postcards. Um, this particular one was in support of um, people at the Dal al Farouk Mosque, where um, it just had been bombed. And so we contacted the Midtown Global Market. We love them, they love us, and they invited us in and we set up a table and we just invited people on social media just to come by and write a postcard. And I was surprised, like we got hundreds of postcards that day just from a little thing on social media. And the cards then we boxed up and sent them to, um, to the mosque. Do you, yep, I know, I'm, yeah, okay, next page. Whoop, that was fun. <laughs> Let's see. So um, as Michelle had mentioned, um, this, this, this social enterprise business isn't really set up to um, enrich my pockets. It's really set up to enrich our community. And I would argue if any of you thought you might make millions of dollars selling lawn signs, I would really like to have a talk with you, like a real like honest, legit, heart to heart. Um, lawn signs are just one way that we we do what we do. Um, you know, we sell t-shirts, prints, clings. Um, we often um, partner with a lot of organizations. Uh, you know, maybe one of the first organizations we partnered with actually was with Golden Valley Pride. And so I don't know if any of you bought signs from John when he was was doing that, but that was that was a great project. We do a lot of work with schools. Um, and schools is really where, where we get a lot of our translations. Um, a lot of teachers work with kids who are from all over the world. And I've seen it firsthand, like how excited students get when they, they actually see their language on a sign. It's like this, 
instant moment of connection. Um, we do a lot of work with events and one of our favorite events, which has been canceled indefinitely was Festival of Nations. And we would be in um, the marketplace there. And it was so cool. We have all of our prints are up and we, it'd be so cool to see kids bring their friends in and like point and say, that's my language, hear them translate it, and then see that they could speak like three others. I mean, it was incredible. Like this next generation that is coming up, they are so amazing. They are such amazing global citizens. And I am so proud to just be in their presence often. You know, it's it's really great. Um, so again, you can see our postcard event, um, our, our use in our schools. Um, another event that we do that I really love, um, is we do the um, stump that where it says we run to support our loved ones. We do an event, um, mental health is something that's important to me personally, but I think also is something that everyone has a challenge with no matter you know what your background is. And so we do a um, an art booth at the um, Stomp Out Suicide 5K. And that is used to um, just offer, give people a chance to make their own sign when they go walk. Um, in order of a loved one or support of someone who might be struggling with um, mental illness at a particular time. Um, that event is is beautiful. And even though the subject matter is very heavy, it's actually very life affirming and very positive. Um, we did it virtually this year, which was a whole new thing. <laughs> but um, it was also um, just one of the other ways we give back. So you can, here's the list of everyone we've worked with in our community so far. Um, it gets it gets bigger, I think, as the years go as the years go on. Um, some people, you know, we've donated in kind. Some people, it's been merch. Some people, it's been an actual donation. Um, some people, we've just donated design services to them or photography services. Um, you know, we're we're really lucky in Minnesota, especially Minneapolis, as as a as a solo lady entrepreneur. A lot of the business has been supported by other solo lady entrepreneurs. A lot of our retail partners are um, are just kind of local, independent, women-owned. Um, I wish this wasn't. Aha, aha! I'm moving you over there. There, I moved that menu. <laughs> no, it's not in my way. <laughs> um, but we've also done a lot of. Um, a lot of times, people just ask for support, and we'll figure out a way to to make it happen. Um. These photos are kind of great. Um, we've, our, our sign, like I said, has a life of its own. Um, the lower corner, it's at the Harvard Dance School. Um, there's another picture of friends wearing signs at the Alamo, <laughs> orange t-shirts at the Alamo. Um, the, the middle one of the March, if you look really closely in the very middle of this, you can see our sign. It's kind of a Where's Waldo. Um, again, it was brought to the Supreme Court um, for, I, I believe in protest of Brett Kavanaugh. Um, we've shipped all over. We, I've shipped, um, we have a line of transgender support items that we uh, donate a percentage of those sales specifically back to Transforming, Minis Transforming Families Minnesota. And Transforming Families, um, they work with uh, transgender youth and their families to um, provide support um, through whatever families might be, might be going through. Um, that sign has had an interesting life. It showed up one night at the turf club during a pussy riot show. It's like one of my favorite photos ever. But I mean, it just lives this like uh, incredible life. And I will get emails that will be like, hey, I saw your sign in a background of a video game. And I'm like, what? And even now, like the sign is in a lot of backgrounds of like um, of uh, classrooms, like virtual digital classrooms. Um, here's just a few of our translations. Um, they're often donated by schools. Um, I try to vet as many as humanly possible, but you know, I speak French badly and I took a just enough Japanese to ask where Godzilla is. I'm not really, <laughs> you know, okuni wa Godzilla desu ka? I mean, really, that, that will not get me very far. Um, but it's the more enthusiastic people get with the project, the more translations we get. I was at um, a pride festival in Rochester and met this like super sweet man who asked for a Swahili sign. And I was like, I don't know the first thing about Swahili, tell me everything. And he gave me a translation and we worked back and forth and we vetted the translation by throwing it out on social media and people loved it. And I sent him some free prints. I mean, that's, it's just, there's something really nice and personal. Like every translation has a story and has a community behind it. 
Um, but as a designer, I have to tell you, it is really, 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 really hard to like take the word all are welcome here, uh, to take the idea of all are welcome here and like lay it out in a page in the character set that you don't understand. And oftentimes, you know, the whole idea of welcome is very tricky to translate because it's both a noun and a verb. So in other languages, um, like our Somali, for instance, it takes about 12 words to say all are welcome here, which you can say in like, um, you know, in four. And it's really tricky too, because some languages are very poetic and metaphorical and others are very logical. So you don't want to say, please come into my house, you know, like that, that could be a problem for a lot of people. Like, please walk right in, you know, it, it's great. Um, but maybe that's okay. You know, if someone stopped by maybe pre COVID, I would invite them in for like, you know, a, a, a fizzy water on the back porch. Why not? You know, it'd be, it'd be great. Um, yeah. Some of these translations are, are really tough. Um, so what is the future of All Are Welcome Here? Um, I feel like I haven't talked enough about it, but I'm going to leave time for questions at the end because it's a really um, crazy project. Um, you know, like I said, it's taken on a life of its own. I try to be the docent of the sign. You know, 2021, I don't know what's going to happen. You know, it's, there's a lot of challenges. You know, first is the economy. You know, you need, in order to make the donation, you need people to buy your products. And right now, a lot of people are really hard hit. You know, as Michelle pointed out, it's like the need for food shelves has gone up 30%. You know, how can All Are Welcome Here be participating without necessarily um, in a different economic model? As um, another thing is, you know, with, um, you know, we work with schools and other organizations, but a lot of our, our online sales were determined by current events. And, you know, with a, with a, a more um, even keel presidential administration, you know, I don't know what our sales are going to be like, you know, again, it's another thing to figure out. But again, there's other opportunities to grow and change and support. Um, you know, I'm also open to the idea that sometimes a message is really, really needed intensely at one point in time. And maybe after a few cycles, it will be needed again. You know, um, there's a lot. There's a lot of fun things that I'm working on um, in the future. I'm doing a, an online fundraiser for mental health. Uh, we have a project going on, another sign project going on with the school in Minneapolis that will be a, an interactive art installation piece. And then I have another campaign going on in my head for Pride, which will be kind of a fun um, new T-shirt idea to help. Um, give back to um, an LGBTQ uh, mental health organization. So um, some of the photos down here are my favorites. Um, there's a teacher at the bottom with a mask. Um, her, her kiddo, one of her students was leaving and she got a Hindi translation and we got it printed up and surprised the student um, on her last day. Um, our prints fit really nicely in a target frame. So that was designed intentionally. <laughs> So you could do that. Um, I love this quilt that someone made at the state fair. I mean, this quilt, number one, is like perfectly created. But number two, I mean, what an interesting question. What a way to take this idea and make it their own. I mean, I, I love that. And it happens all the, all the time. Um, another thing that we do, um, you know, again, now that everything's virtual, a lot of teachers have asked if they can reuse our artwork. And I'm like, yes, whatever you want, it's yours, you know, <laughs> just to make your digital classrooms more welcoming. And the, the last one I just love, um, it's a building downtown. It was the Olson ad agency. And when the Super Bowl was here in 2018, they took post-it notes and did this on their building. So when helicopters and you know the media crew flew over, they could see this. And I always thought it was like the best stunt. And I didn't realize this, but my neighbor at the time, she worked for the Minneapolis City Hall on the, the committee that works on the preservation of historic buildings. And she saw this and apparently it's their job to go shut those things down, you know, like if you don't treat a building a certain way. And she's like, I pretended I didn't see it. I just let it be, <laughs> which is so great. So, um, so yes, so here's just a few more of the things that we have done. Um, we did a custom project for the Carlson School. Um, we our sign has been trans, our sign is made out of wood. Our, our, sometimes we meet people the, the strangest ways. So like, can we make your sign out of wood? We're like, heck yeah, let's see how it goes. I think it turned out pretty good. 
Um, we do have some dog bandanas. So if your dog does get bigger, we have some in my basement. I'm happy to send to you. Um, though actually more humans wore them at Pride than actual dogs, just, just to say. Um, and yeah, it's just been, you know, being really open to our community, what community needs, how we can best use our tools and our resources to amplify other work that's out, um, out there. So yes, all are welcome to ask questions. You like that transition? <laughs> but um, yeah, that's kind of, I realized I talked really fast about it. I'm just really, I always get really excited. I'm always really proud of the work. Um, and I'm always excited just, you know, um, just to see how people react to it. You know, I think it's always interesting to see like, oh my gosh, an actual human made this thing. Like, where did it come from? Outer space? No, <laughs> like, it's, it's here. So it's here and it's inspired by all of you and it's all of you that make it amazing. So, and since this, I have to tell you, I have been, um, I spoke to the St. Louis Park Rotary Club and I had no idea how welcoming and amazing Rotary is. Oh. Like, so thank you for all that you do. I know that you do a lot of work behind the scenes and connect a lot of people together. And sometimes, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun. You meet some interesting people along the way. And I just want to acknowledge that it's a lot of work. So thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Holy cow. Yeah, that's, that's a lot. Well, and it's cool that, that these signs they say originated here because, yeah, I mean, a, a, across the country, across the world, I think people are, are utilizing it. Wow. What a. And, and Jamie, you're always welcome here at Rotary. <laughs> yes. Well, I had to turn down St. Louis Park for now because I am, um, I have a distance learner here at home. And so that's been kind of a trick, everything through COVID. Though we did make masks for all our welcome here. And I'm, oh, great idea. Th they're super great. I uh, just getting the legal disclaimer. I mean, honestly, like <laughs> it's, it's pretty extensive. So that's my, my other call today is how do we get masks out into the world? They're great. They say respect and compassion for all on them. They're, 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 and they're navy blue. So they'll hide dirt and lipstick and sweat. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, they're, it's been a trip. Um, Pamela. Yes. Hi. I, I was going to put the, put the zoom hand up, but I, I decided that I'd put my hand up instead to just wait my turn. Uh, where can you get the onesies? The, the, oh. the ones? So those are really funny. The onesies are no longer available. Um, I want to redesign them with less color. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, because a lot of color, as you know, like sometimes your favorite t-shirt, if you have a really big emblem here. Mm -hmm. But actually it works okay for spit up, I think. You know, <laughs> Even it's stiff, is that what the problem yeah, is? Yeah, and there's a lot of colors. So I thought it would be really cute to remake a onesie that was really simple that just said hello and heart and welcome. Mm -hmm. Like how cute would that be for a new baby? It just says mm -hmm. hello and heart and welcome, you know, just mm -hmm. really, mm -hmm. really simple. So no, the onesies um, were, a, it's interesting um, from a sales perspective, like they were not great sellers online, but man, if I was doing a Christmas market, people were like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you have, do you have a website that the, uh, uh, a web store or, yeah. okay. Yep, we have, uh, um, here's our site. Um, I just threw it in the chat. Um, we have a lot of items on there. Um, I'm, I'd like to redesign it to make it a little more usable. Like I feel like if you go to our prints and you see all of our languages, it's really unwieldy. <laughs> it's just a lot. Um, we also, you know, we're on Instagram and we're on Facebook and, you know, I use my journalism background a lot for Facebook to really like pull stories from our community that kind of share what people do to make our community great, you know, together. Um, and also on Instagram, it's always, there's not a lot of product photos. It's more just like, what are other people in our community doing? How can we use our channel to uplift um, events and things that are going on that you may not necessarily um, know about. So if you want to follow us on Facebook or um, Instagram, I assure you it will not be a nonstop feed to buy stuff. You will learn really interesting, cool stuff because I'm always trying to be a better ally. And so I read all the time. And so I post all these things that I find to be interesting or useful um, that might help all of us, you know, find a new way to navigate forward. So 
Can you also give uh, give us your uh, contact information? Oh, absolutely. Can you um, address or something or? Yeah, you can contact me for anything. I mean, I, I'm a chatty Kathy, as you can see, so. Awesome, and Peggy, I think you had a question too. Yeah, this is a more technical question. I'm, I, you mentioned how difficult it was to make some of these signs in, in other languages if they don't have uh, Roman letters or Chinese characters that you can probably get someplace. Where, how do you do, I noticed some, I don't know what language they right? were very evenly done, but every character was one that I would never identify with any particular group of languages or anything. How do you do those? It's and so even. Well, um, most of the work I do is in a program called Illustrator. But one of the things that I love, and I'm telling everyone this, uh, Google has a, a collection of fonts. I think it's called the Google Font Project. And now it's just called Google Fonts. But it's the fonts are, you know, that's what a font is a file that allows your computer to type out characters in different styles, like courier or cursive or, um, you know, uh, comic sounds, which a lot of people use that looks like handwriting. Um, and so they actually have fonts from all over the world. And so I've, I've actually had to go to Google a couple times and look for like Tamil, you know, like a lot of um, Minneapolis, depending upon what part, like the Western suburbs, like Minnetonka, there's a lot of people from India and India itself has dozens of languages. Um, even though like there's a few that are, you know, spoken nationally, you know, so I've gotten like new ones almost every single time from India and the scripts are incredible or like some, it's interesting, some languages don't have a character set. So like the Hmong language, for example, Hmong was just oral. There was, it wasn't written down. So with Hmong, they actually use um, the, uh, the Greek alphabet to do it. You know, they use like a, like a, or is it the Roman alphabet? I'm, I'm, anyway, they, they use the, our current set of letters to make their sounds. And that's the Roman same. Alphabet. Roman, yeah, thank you. And that's the same as um, Swahili as well. But other characters like, um, and this is really hard, like Arabic, you know, it's written backwards. And my understanding of Arabic is the vowels are not part of the thing. You kind of fill in the vowels as you read it. And what's really tricky, I don't know how to do it, is that, there's a way programmatically to connect two words together so it looks even, but sometimes an illustrator, they just want them to be two separate characters. So it's, it's, it's challenging, but you know, I always send it back to the community, you know, again, putting that journalism hat on, trying really, really hard to um, ask our own community for corrections. Um, I throw things out on Facebook all the time, be like, hey, do you know someone who speaks Hindi? Is this in the ballpark, you know? Our Hebrew translation, people hate it. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> I don't, they don't hate it. It just says all are blessed here instead of all are welcome here. And some people, like if you're at a school, like they had, there was an incident where a, a parent was mad about it. And I was like, well, it was, we got it from the Minneapolis Jewish Federation. They had six different Hebrew speakers there from all over the world. This is the one they decided on. But I also work with a, a rabbi in the Human uh, Rights Commission, and he's like, I think I can find you a better translation. And I'm like, you know what? I think it's cool that it's up for argument, you know, that we all, there's different ways to approach it no matter where you are. So I shouldn't say our Hebrew translated is hated. It's most debated, I should say. <laughs> it's the most debated translation. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so it's, you learn so much about different cultures by, by different languages or just seeing different character sets or just what's, you know, even just, um, again, like just building relationships with organizations who might have speakers of a certain language too. So we work a lot with the International Institute of Minnesota. I don't know if you guys know about them. They're in St. Paul. They resettle immigrants and refugees. They've done it for over a hundred years. Um, and oftentimes like we'll ask them like, do you have a student who speaks <laughs> dot, dot, dot. And sometimes we can, we can get close. Um, and then sometimes we get a translation back that's not even close and then it's like well how do you choose you know and i feel like the best thing to do is just to be transparent with that like our our turkish translation we were deciding between two and we chose one and i'm like well i'll put that in there because i think people should know you know it's, it's tough it's not a one-to-one -one 
translation. So anyway, sorry. Jamie, are you doing all this yourself? Do you have a team or <laughs> you've had to learn to do a lot of different things? <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, it's all me. There was this really hilarious, I don't know if you saw it, it was going around social media. It was a video like, meet our marketing team. <laughs> and then it was, meet our web guru. You know, <laughs> the same person, you know, doing everything or, you know, they were like, you know, just, yeah. So I, I do have, um, I have worked with uh, some, some freelance designers who will help out with this. Um, but right now, I'm, it's, it's hard because it's a business that basically breaks even. So it's hard to actually, you know, pay someone for the, fairly for the work that they do. So oftentimes um, I rely on colleagues who are like, yeah, you can pay me $10 an hour to do that for you. And, you know, and I will say I do have a warehouse um, in Egan. So all of my fulfillment is taken care of and they love the project. So they gave us a special deal. Um, so, but yeah, that's, that's really the only people who are behind and my husband, I mean, you know, he, by proxy. <laughs> he always talks about like, he knew it was serious when a pallet of signs was delivered in the driveway. You know, it wasn't just, Oh, my wife is just making some stuff. It was like, Holy this is a pallet with like 2000 signs. This is real. And I'm like, yep. I, so, I'm wondering, awesome. have you received any pushback from anyone? As you mentioned in the beginning, some negative rhetoric and sometimes when there's a just, you know, starkly different message, it, it, it might take a, a little heat from some people too. You know, can I be a knock on wood? No. And I am waiting for the moment when I come home because I live right on Cedar Lake Road and I'm waiting for the moment where like something terrible is like spray painted on my house, you know, like I'm waiting for that and nothing, you know, and I'm really glad, you know, I, I also think it's um, partially because, like I said, um, I, I try to use social media very smartly and not make it about me or even our business, but just talking, using our social media to amplify the good work that's coming up, like a perfect story. I wish I would have posted it a couple days ago. I just saw it, but Peggy Flanagan mm -hmm. um, is making a call to rework um, the history section for Native Americans in our elementary schools mm -hmm. and our, our public public education system. And I thought, what a cool idea, you know? Um, and that so that's the kind of the story that I would promote. Um, and I just throw, I figure by seeing these things that are positive, that kind of talk about inclusivity for all is one way to sort to amplify this is one way to get around i try really you know i think if i was on twitter oh i hate twitter but if i was on twitter trying to be a spokesperson i i think then i probably would be targeted um also because the internet's a place that it is really kind of a dangerous place for women in general i think sometimes you know i think it can be mm -hmm. targeting too so um at worst i think maybe we've gotten like a few hate mail letters Okay. Or like people will, there was one um, kind of funny write up in a student newspaper by a conservative col columnist that said, all are welcome here. Does that mean like all are welcome to have dinner? And I was like, I don't know, go ask, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then my husband's like, that's a great idea for a lawn sign. And so I'm like, so do you think we can add for dinner <laughs> under here, you know, <laughs> I mean, that would be, that would be kind of cool, you know, like I'm having people over for a community meal, you know, right for your dinner party. And right. yeah, what do you eat? You know, I mean, if you're gluten free and vegan, we're maybe we should have made some plans in advance, but you know, we can, we can work this out. We got this. We're going to tailor it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so yeah, it's one person. Um, right now, which is really, really, really nice is winter. No one wants a lawn sign. So in winter, it's very quiet. Um, and on a normal year, once the ground gets soft enough to garden and put something metal in your yard, uh, sales of lawn signs go and then pride hits. And it, in years where pride is a party, it's a party, you know, it's so much fun. You get to see all these kids coming and it's so cool at pride to see kids like 
you know, being exactly who they are, you know, like, I don't think that was always really encouraged all the time. And just seeing them in this space, just being super cool with their sexual identity or their gender identification is amazing. And then um, we get another bump, like with back to school, because um, a lot of teachers will want this in their classroom or buy, buy t-shirts for everyone to wear the first day. And then and then things kind of trail off like around the holidays, unless I do like a market, but like around the holidays, I figure people really don't want inclusivity around the holidays. I'm not sure <laughs> what, the, what that is about. They want onesies around the holidays and yep, yep. yeah, not lawn signs. Interesting so. marketing learnings. Yeah, yeah, I know it's, but it's also interesting too, because when this whole thing started, it was a lot like building a plane in the air. I mean, when mm -hmm. something you do goes viral, and goes off the ground. I mean, we were just trying to keep up. And I had a lot of friends and family helping at the, the beginning, but we were just trying to keep up with all of it. And then now, I mean, I thought that last year was going to be a quiet year and I could really do like some intensive boss lady thinking of stuff like and actually put plans together from all these learnings. And 2020 was the most insane. Yeah. As we all know, it was a really difficult year. And so um, right now we are, I'm in a nice quiet spot, so I can kind of figure, figure out some stuff like where to go next, what happens, what happens next. But, you know, I always get surprised. I just got a, an email the other day from, um, someone in Plymouth and they're like, our neighborhood association wants 30 signs. And I said, I can help you with that. <laughs> Let me know. I'll so, right person. Yeah. And it's been fun too. Like we do a lot of stuff. We, I, I always try to engage our community. That's one of the things I learned at startribune.com. You know, we always were throwing things at the wall and see what stuck, took a risk and then dialed back or went forward depending upon the results. And so our garden flags were something that was um, asked for, for years from our community. We want a garden flag. My neighborhood association won't let me have lawn signs, but I want a garden flag. Ooh. So I finally found a manufacturer who will make them at a price where I can resell and make enough to make a donation. And those things, I can't keep them in stock. Like everyone wants a garden flag. It's great. So, you know, listening to people, not only for what projects they want you to support, but what items they want, you know, in their home is really important too. Right. There's, there's also a trend going on right now um, for minimalism and scaling back. So one other thing that I'm working with um, some students at Carlson. They're gonna be my con consultants. I'm so excited. <laughs> They're gonna help me work on a Patreon campaign. So oh, yeah. Um, yeah, and I think that will be good. You know, people yeah. just donating a little bit. Yep, here that's there. a great idea. Betsy, you had a question? What's a Patreon campaign? Um, so Patreon is a, a service that allows you to pay for some subscriptions that you like. Like if you like a certain podcast, um, you can um, give them like 20 bucks or you can have them like deduct $20 mm -hmm. a month from your bank account. So a lot of artists are using it now. Like if you like a particular writer or if you like a particular painter, they've created a Patreon um, where you can basically be their Patreon on person they'll send you some special things maybe yeah. or as kind of like to see things i send five bucks a month to a friend of mine who's a professional artist and yeah and it's and it's fun too because if you sometimes and this is the part where the business school kids i'm kind of excited about like what are the special extra bonus features if you if you mm -hmm this project like mm -hmm. do you get to come over for dinner or you know do you get mm -hmm. you know a special limited edition coaster like this coaster needs a rainbow you know so let's let's do that you know so there's cool. it's, it's a cool, cool yeah it, it's really cool it's a way to support artists and projects that you know aren't officially nonprofits. so and especially artists who have who rely on the ability to perform live and who have not been able to do so in the yeah. pandemic, Patreon has been huge in just supporting them and the, their their ability to continue to, you know, live and create art, and then mm -hmm. hopefully be able to uh, start right back up performing when it's safe again. And it's nicer than something like Kickstarter. You know, like Kickstarter just gets you all the money up front to make something, and some people don't need to really kickstart anything. You know, like you said, it's Peggy. It's like, you know, I I just want to support this thing that I do and. You know, it keeps the momentum there. going with it too. It's a new, new model. Knowing that membership models are 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 quite successful, 
um, yeah, I'll be curious to see after that pandemic too, kind of how it adapts or how it fits, but cool to have students there helping you, right? Like, yeah, it's, it's a project. Um, it's called 180 DC. It's uh, kind of the Carlson school of marketing, uh, students, the undergrads get together and, uh, work on a project and, uh, yeah, do you guys, um, they're, they're, they're really great. I, I connected them. One of my clients is a, a nonprofit that does um, anti-racism education. And I connected them and I think they helped them with like their social media build out. So if you give them a very specific task, they will run with it. So I'm hoping that I'll, I'll be really curious to see how they do with Patreon. So working smarter, that's the way to do it. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you so much, you. Jamie. I don't know about you guys, but I want to go online and like stock up on everything. This is- no, no. Thank you for <laughs> thank you for what you're doing. Truly, this is you know what started off as a neat idea is really really very very powerful, um, and it it allows, as you said, the opportunity for people to express their values in a very public way. And um, it's been a heck of a year, and for us to find ways to be positive and and, and to share that with each other, I I think it's amazing. Awesome. Hey, you the world needs. I know. Right? Yeah. Do you guys know Guy from the St. Louis Park Rotary Club? Yep. yep. He, sure do. He and I are working on a project to get signs to Rotary Clubs. So I... it might not be the last you'll see of me. All right. Good. <laughs> Good. All right. I like it. I'll support that for sure. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you. Like I said, thank you for everything that you do. Um, reach out if you have questions or um, ideas or feedback anything is great. Like I, I just love connecting with people and I love knowing more about what you're doing in the future. And honestly, for your, um, your event, Michelle, we'll donate, or maybe we can sponsor. I have to see how, what the, the tiers are, but we have stuff to donate to the silent auction for sure. Oh, did we lose Michelle? I think we did. Dang oh, no. it. Oh, she, she was so excited that it just, just like, me. <laughs> okay, she just said, I crashed. Can you finish? Yes, I can. Okay. <laughs> Jamie, I will make sure that that message gets pushed back over to Michelle, and I'm sure she'll be thrilled. So thank you, thank you for that. Thank you so much. Um, okay, friends, we usually finish the meeting with the four-way test, and Michelle has the graphic. Um, I don't. So can we, can we do it from memory? And I think, Jamie, um, we're gonna, I'm going to send this to you later because I, th I think this will resonate with all of the work that you're doing, too. The four-way test of the things we think, say, and do. Number one, is it the truth? Number two, is it fair to all concerned? Number three, will it build goodwill and better friendships? Number four, will it... Oh, no, I lost it. <laughs> Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Thank you. Boy, I, I, I think I was dependent on looking at it. I did okay. I did okay. All right, friends. Thank you so much for joining us at this week's Rotary. We look forward to seeing you next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. Be safe. Stay warm. Jamie, thank you again. Thank you. And have a great week, everybody.